This video will take you through the basic steps for solving a three-piece Atwood machine. We'll start with a generic problem here. Uh, we have three pieces, two connected on the right, one piece connected on the left, uh, rolling over a massless and frictionless pulley. Right. Our question asks us to determine the acceleration of the system and the tension in both strings. So we'll start out our problem solving the same way we always do, by listing our given. Again, since this is a generic problem, we won't have any numbers, we'll just use our symbols to work forward from here. So we know the three masses that we're given, and we know the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth. From there, we'll list out our unknowns as the next step in our guess method. We know that we've been asked to determine the acceleration of the system and the tension in both strings. We'll identify which one of our strings is which uh, a little bit later on. There's one other thing or one other step that we need to take into account as we move forward here and that's our forces due to gravity. We can determine those fairly easily so we can put them in with our given information. We can determine them by just using our weight equation here, or F sub G is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity acting on that object. So we can list out FG1, FG2, and FG3 here. Those should be fairly straightforward to calculate for you. Our next step is going to be to determine our free body diagrams. You'll notice that I've blown up all the picture or our diagram here and we'll start adding our forces into it. The first forces that we're going to add are going to be our forces due to gravity. We'll start with the first one, second one, and third one. Now, due to the fact that we don't necessarily know the size of the masses, um, all of our FGs here have the same magnitude. But we do know that if we had larger masses as say M3 and M2, those vectors would be a little bit longer than if they were than those of FG. Next let's establish our forces due to tension that are acting in the string. We'll call the string that goes over the pulley there, we'll call that tension 1 or we'll call that the first string, we'll call that FT1. Now we also know that that needs to balance out the tension on the other side of FT1 that's acting on mass number 2. So we have one other string here at play and we'll say that we have FT2 acting between masses 2 and 3 and that those again are equal and opposite in nature. So we've taken our time to just establish our diagram, put together our FBDs, so we can just slide that down there to the left hand corner. At this point now we're going to start to put together our equations. All of our equations here are based on Newton's second law or sigma f is equal to m times a or the sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Due to the fact that we have three masses we're going to need to establish three different equations for each one of our objects. So we'll list them out vertically here. As I look at the forces that are acting on mass 1, I see that I have a force of tension and I have a force due to gravity. Based on the determination that the clockwise motion is positive, I'm going to allow FT1 to remain a positive value and we're going to set FG1 as a negative value. That'll leave me with this. I'm still adding my forces, but I'm adding the direction piece in there as well. I'll do that same step again here for object number two, only now I have three forces at work. I have my two forces pulling down in the positive direction, FG2 and FT2, and I have the force of tension one pulling in the negative direction, so that'll leave me with this. Again, I'm just establishing the sum of the forces acting on those singular objects. And then my final object that I have is mass number 3. And I'll put together my equation just like that. From here, let's establish the things in each equation that we know. We know our FGs and we know our masses. The things we don't know are the accelerations and our forces of tension. By looking at object number 2, you'll notice that we have three pieces that we don't know in that equation. 
Right? The other two, we have just two things that we don't know. That means we need to use a system of equations here. So our first step here is going to be to identify how are we going to solve for those. Well, based on what I see in object number one's equation and object number three's equation, I can solve them for FT1 and FT2 respectively and then plug those in to the equation for object number two and that'll leave me with just one unknown being my acceleration. So let's work through that process. Let's look first at object number one. If I'm trying to isolate FT1 to make that substitution, it'll look, give me an equation that looks like this. All I do is add FG1 to both sides. If I look at object number three, my first step is to subtract FG3 from both sides and then multiply both sides by negative one to get FT2 all by itself, which will leave me with the opposite of M3A plus FG3. At this point now, all I'm doing is making a substitution. I'm going to take what my value is for FT1, or my equation for FT1, and I'm going to substitute it in for FT1. And I'm going to do the same thing for FT2. When I do that, it's going to give me a nice big long equation just like this. The, be the beauty of this is really now that I've simplified the things that I know and the things that I don't know. I've simplified the things that I know to all of my forces due to gravity and all of my masses. The things that I don't know now just remain one singular piece there, my acceleration. So now I'm going to work through and solve for my accelerations. This is the exact same equation just brought over from our previous page. And now we're going to work to solve for our acceleration. So our first step is to move everything with an acceleration to one side. But before that, I'm going to distribute this negative sign that exists out in front of the parentheses there on the left side of our equation. That'll leave us with our equation looking this way. Now, each one of my pieces can be moved as an individual because I've now eliminated those parentheses. So I'm going to move everything within A to the right-hand side of my equation. So that means I'm going to add an M3A to the left side and the right side, as well as add an M1A to both sides. What that'll do is that'll leave me with all of my forces on one side of the equation and all of my M times A's on the opposite side of the equation. Our next step is going to be to factor out that A. And it's basically the reverse of the, of the distributive property. I'm going to factor out that A and it'll leave me with A times the quantity of M2 plus M3 plus M1 is equal to, again, the sum of those forces. Now, my final step here to get A all by itself so I can establish my acceleration is to divide both sides by M2 plus M3 plus M1. It will leave us with an equation that looks just like this. The acceleration of my object is equal to the sum of the forces acting on those objects divided by the mass of those objects. If you think back to our standard version of Newton's second law, that should fit right in with what you already know to be true. So if I know those values within a system, I can plug those into that equation and I can then determine the acceleration. But that only answers one of the three unknowns. But really our next steps are pretty straightforward. I just take this acceleration and I plug it back into those equations that I identified for the force of tension in object one and the force of tension in object number three. If you have any questions, or I should say when you have questions that come up as you're working through this process or any other examples, please make sure to stop by and to see your teacher.